Hey everyone, Brad Frost. Scott Carroll. <laughs> hey everyone, Scott Carroll and Brad Frost here at the ATA Show, the Challenge Outdoor Podcast. Brad, we're going to take a little walk around. ATA Show's just kicking off and show these guys some of the vendors here. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited, man, because we get to see some of our old partners. We get yep. to hopefully make some new ones, see some old friends. So what you say we get in here and yeah, they, check it out? A lot of new stuff, as always. We've already done a little bit of walking around. We're pretty excited about what we've seen. We're ready to share it with you guys. What's up, guys? We're here with our here with our buddy Kurt Price, Luminot. The yeah. guy's a character, man. Yes, so we sir. love working with him. Been working with you since 2014. Long damn time, man. Yeah. 2014. Yeah. No. No, 2004. Yeah. What am I talking about? Long time. Well, Didn't seem that long to us. Seems longer for Kurt. I'm starting to worry about him, Brad. I'm slipping. I've been worried about yeah. <laughs> but no, we've been working with you guys for a long time, and you guys have been pretty good guys. And, you know, you actually come stay at my place this year. Yeah, we yeah. enjoyed ourselves out there, man. We had a great... frogs or something. But we ain't here to shoot frogs. Let's talk about Lou. Let's Scott. do it, man. What's new this year, buddy? New this year is my my, my brother redesigned the x knock to where it has a metal strap on it. Now, you can't really see it from where you're at, guys, but the metal strap helps conductivity in Black Eagle and uh, oh, Black Eagle and Bloodsport size arrows that are 204. That's one of our main things that we changed this year is the metal strap on an x knot. Okay, something that's not been enough attention to is on your small arrows like your VAPs and your RIPs, you know, and your uh, your four, dia four millimeter diameter arrows is that g -Nox, we just found that g -Nox are just too damn dangerous. Right. You know, there's not enough plastic there to keep it all together. So we. We designed an aluminum ferrule to glue right. on the end of the arrow, and we right. put an H knock in it, and it's brighter than any G knock ever. Right. You it know. is bright. It is bright. So, uh, are we talking brighter than what come out two or three years ago? Even brighter than that? What was it? Two years ago now? No, I was comparing it to competitors. You know. I got you. You know the G knocks. You know, like thirty percent brighter than anything else on the market. Well, it was thirty percent brighter than what we had. And we were already brighter than anything on the market. That was a, a self-promotion, you know. Well, that's not, what that's you know that's what we're here for. Sometimes we talk in you confusing gotta talk. ways because we're just a bunch of hicks. Yeah. You know. Illinois, Georgia. I mean, what do you expect? We're just we're just nobodies. So we just make lighted arrow knocks. We make lighted arrow knocks that are bright enough to see in the daytime because who hunts at night? You know. <laughs> Poachers. Well. <laughs> <laughs> practically have to use our competition when it's dark so you can see where the hell it went. Yeah. Well, you know, just... when we first, 2004, so got the right date finally, 2004 when we first started shooting these, you know, we thought, man, that's cool. Didn't put a whole lot of thinking behind it other than it was cool, but after we started shooting them and realizing it's really a vital tool to not only help you increase your accuracy, you can tell how your arrow's flying. So if you got any wobble on that arrow, you're gonna see it with a Luminoc. Great tuning tool. Yeah, you don't have to paper tune. You can see it. You still need to paper tune to fine tune, you know, paper exactly tune. where it is. But you can find where your arrow goes. If you miss, pass throughs, you can recover your arrow quickly. And, and right then, you know, hey, I got 30 minutes. I'm going to get the deer. I thought I heard it fall, now I know. Or hey, man, I'm looking at all night, maybe six, six, ten hours, or come back in the morning, and it's helped us dictate how we need to recover it deer. Always. And you know, I've been hunting for years, and my dad taught me the first thing you do, you got to find your damned arrow, right, and see why the good hit, the good the hit is. If you didn't see where he hit the animal, because he always got on me because I, I had a hard time falling the arrow to the animal. You yep. know, and then once we started putting lights on, I actually saw what Dad was talking about. Dad would always talk about the hole. He could always see the hole left by right. the arrow and he shot a deer, you know, and I never really could. My eyes weren't that good. And uh, so, but when I lived in the lighted knock, 
I saw what Dad was talking about. You know, it helps you it helps you concentrate right. on the knock a lot better. And then you see where right the arrow. Is. These exactly. bows are so fast now. You can actually see. You know, and for television purposes, I hate to be watching a show that doesn't shoot a lumen knock because I heard a noise. I think he hit him, but I don't know. I think I hit him. I right. How many times I heard that? And in low light, man, you really need that, and it, it definitely improves the quality of our show for sure. But it, it's helped us recover more animals. So I'm gonna say with the tuning part of it. It's helped us be more successful, and it's helped us become better hunters because we're making better shots, our bows are tuned, we're recovering more game, and hey, as a hunter, that's what it's all about, recovering game. So Success. Exactly. And another good thing about Illuminoc, and people don't really realize it, sometimes you won't see, you know, your air will be just buried. If you just will take the time to come back when it's dark, yeah, you'll, you'll find, find that arrow. Well, I got I mean, a story we about that. We found them in trees, you know, ricocheted. You didn't know it stuck yeah. up in a tree. There's a lot of ways, you I, know. We hunt in uh, Wyoming, and we put a target out in the field, you know. So we're shooting 40, 50, 60 yards. You know, Brad's out there skipping, you know, doing trick shots and stuff, and he loses three or four arrows. You know, I was like, let's go hunt, man. We'll find them after uh, we get, you know, it gets dark. Sure enough, walk out there, and, and we're walking up, and you can see them. They're just it looked like an airport runway out there. And I'm out there shooting, he, he loves to tell this story, we're on a mule deer hunt, out of, hunting out of ground blinds, and I'm shooting uh, prairie dogs. So the guides out there watching, you know, seeing air, Luminox flying, and he's like, what is this guy doing? Is he freaking deer hunting or is he hunting prairie dogs? So he kids that when he come to pick me up, you know, it looked like Custard's last stand with all the arrows sticking up out there. but. We love them. We appreciate everything you do for the Challenge Outdoors, man. And uh, we're well, on for this year, right? Somewhat. <laughs> Hope to. You know, we're just trying to survive here. I know. Know. We're me. in Illinois, and Illinois is run by a bunch of communists, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. what you're saying, they may come take your money. They may. Yeah. Yeah, will you come get me out of jail? Oh, we'll definitely come All get right. you. Yeah. You ain't been in Facebook That's jail, what you call you? a partnership there. Uh, yeah. No, my brother's in there every day, though. Is he? Yeah. He gets a little political, but that's okay. We yeah. all do. We all need to. We got to. We got to protect our rights, man. Yeah, right, and they are man. taking them from us. Yeah, especially around you guys. I mean, it's getting closer to you guys. It, it is. Illinois man. is doing the same thing, but well, you, you know. guys are. You know, I think your guys are already there. <laughs> you know, with, with uh, you know, it's you, let's don't use bows. We might have to use our guns one of these days. Exactly. You know, but you I'm know. pretty good with both. Yeah, I am too. I. I, I'm a, I love guns. I appreciate your time today, buddy. You bet. I uh, always know. Don't we're leave me hanging. With the loom knock. Yeah, no, no, don't leave me hanging. There we go. Hey, guys, that's just one of the great guys and products we're going to show you throughout the, the uh, podcast today. So we're going to be on to the next one, but thanks for watching. Good luck to you guys, and see you later. Hey guys, Brad Frost and Scott Carroll from the Outdoor. Dang, come it. Hey guys, Brad and Scott here with the Challenge Outdoor Podcast, and today we're joined by Mark Weinberg. Close Weinberg. enough. Weinberg. Weinberg. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm no, to... I've been called a lot worse. No worries, <laughs> with. Mark is with Arcus, and Mark, uh, we'd really appreciate you taking time out here. Yes. Thank you. It, it, it's my pleasure. I mean, you know, as a product development manager up here all year, you, you can have put an exciting job. job. It's yeah. six brands and. You know, now it's like, okay, here's where the validity comes in to see how you guys react to yeah, it and the right. customers. A lot of new like products, it. man. What, what are you most They're excited working hard. about? Well, we brought like one from just about every every uh, different brand here. Um, let's let's start with the Rancat. This year, what we did was uh, we kind of built on some success that we've had in the past. Uh, you'll see a little bit of our Savage Broadhead and a little right. bit of our Diamond Broadhead, yeah, right. Diamondback yeah. kind of meshed together to form a really cool a uh, hybrid style broadhead. Um, it looks extremely sharp and deadly. It's sharp. I mean, it's there's deadly, blades everywhere. strong. Um, we got the concave scoop from the original, right. you know, right. so it, everything that's proven, you know, that works, we, we molded it into one. And, uh, yeah. Well, we've used excited all three of the uh, previous ones and all three of them did great, so combining all those into one, I'm excited to try that out. You bet sure. you. Bet we you. got a target rich environment down there, great testing nice. grounds, Georgia, hogs, so. Oh. I might just have to come, come on down. We'll, we'll, <laughs> run, we'll run a few of them, a few hogs down there. And right. 
So we got a two inch mechanical cut, a seven inch fixed blade cut. So it, it, wow. it puts it really good on. Yeah. All right, well, say this six six to ten times. Uh, I'll, I'll do good this to say it once. Buck pucks. <laughs> uh, think of it as a lollipop for your deer. <laughs> well, basically what we've done is, is taken the, uh, our deer lure, our deer urine, and uh, molded it and uh, made it uh, solid. And uh, basically what we're trying to do is make it easier for a guy to get the tank's deer lure out, out. into his area. Right. You know, in the dark, sometimes you're fumbling and you spill more than you all want or all drop. You. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is easy, man. It, it's a sealed bag. Think about your fishing lures, you know, with all right. that smell on it. Yeah. So um, you, you rip it open, it's resealable. You got so clamshell packets. Yep. yep. You put it in your pocket, you don't get deer lure all over you. Well, there's nothing That's worse me. than some smokehouse bayou jerky covered in, <laughs> in <laughs> smell 69. I'm telling you. Right. You get that on your hand and you get up here and you start right. eating, you're like, man, Brian may have mixed up on this formula here with the jerky, you. but yeah, you know, so we've been there and done that plenty. Or get it on your glove. That right. is a really neat idea. So each one will last about a week. If oh, it, wow. If it rains like three or four days in a row it may be a little less but still it's going to go to the ground and, and it'll still be there so this so. will be a, something great to hang out in front of a trail camera yes sir a trail camera Start you know, a mock straight. 20 yards you know from yeah, where you, want, you, where you yeah. want him to be yes, yeah. exactly man all of the above so this thing here kind of looks like a lantern that is the p fuser uh, we got some good names man. hey you know <laughs> you, you, you got to be creative i can't take credit for it i really okay. can't I really can't, but uh, so how does this work? I think you may be able to load this for us without the deer lure. Can you sure. do that? Well, <laughs> what I did, you know, and I, I promise it's, it's 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 not a trick. I put water in these so we could do it. Oh, so all these? Yeah. All right. So well, better you water. <laughs> <laughs> and I did not get any tinks on it. As much thing. as I love tinks, uh, not here. No. <laughs> it's kind of, it I, has its place. If I could open it, let's see. Let's see here. Okay. There we go. Here we go. You got cool. the bottle. You got the bottle. So, what we've done is taken a battery operated. Um, it's it's really a diffuser. So it a, we got a wick in here. The wick brings up the liquid out of the bottom. Oh, you, you put it in here, and basically it's an ultra really vibrate ultrasound frequency that turns the liquid into a vapor. So, so no more pouring into the drippers. Right. And stuff. Oh, oh, so wow. you can see how it comes out, man. Oh, so it's tanks. <laughs> so you know, the wind direction too. Yeah, yeah. Hang it, you know, whatever. If you want to set it on the ground, set it on the snow. Now how long? How long would that last? Now what? Our, different settings. Kind of our cadence. We just got one setting. What it's going to do when you flip that switch? It'll come on for thirty seconds. Then it'll shut off for two minutes. And then it'll come oh, back. That's on. Perfect. Yeah. That's yeah. Neat. So, so that that area is being saturated with that scent. When it may get a little low, boom, it's back on. Right. Right. And uh, it'll. So that's all. You got about seven hours in one bottle. Oh, oh. and what's that going to retail for? Are you getting it? Yeah, it's it's twenty nine ninety nine, man. That that's the bottle and the wow. fuser. And I guess you can buy refillable. Refillables, yeah, for, for refillable. like nine ninety nine. Okay. So the same as the team small. It is. Yeah. 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 We, we you know, you can go through a bottle a lot quicker if you just yeah. guys are just throwing it out on the ground and exactly. pouring it straight. Exactly. And, and so that's going to be something you want to have in there with you when you're hunting, obviously. Obviously, yes, sir. Absolutely, I sure would. You know, easy, fill it in cargo yeah. pocket, backpack, yeah. it's lightweight. That is cool. Let's see if I can figure this out. Yeah. I know you can do it. You're professional. But <laughs> I can do it. So you just sit That's up in the middle of the night thinking up ideas about how to improve things or people make suggestions? Or? Yeah, sometimes, you know, it, it, it may be, oh, it's crazy. It, it's sitting up in a tree stand or sometimes I'm going through a store and I'll see something in a totally different area and I'm like, we did this, this, and this. Holy smokes, right? right. Or you know, we'll get an idea. A guy will call in some of you guys yeah. like you will say, "Hey, if you did this, it would really help." Yeah, this so, is our idea. <laughs> there you go. All right, I'll, there you go. I'll share, man. You got it. It works. Well, this kind of works. You know, multiple. Cover, you know, it's, like I said, just kind of jokingly, but it's a great wind yeah. indicator. Yeah, yeah. You, it is. You you could set one out at twenty yards, thirty yards, wherever with the deer lure. You could, you know, maybe figure out a way to get we're thinking about using cedar or pine or something just kind of like one because it covers it to to put, and yeah. Stand with it. yeah that was so, yeah 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 well that i like the idea of that and you know you can just 
periodically just glance over there. And, right. You know, a lot of times you, the wind's never the same. Never. But you got a deer coming in, and you're like, man, the wind was good a while ago, and that might determine how quick you shoot. You know, right. you have to shoot at 30 just because you can tell the wind. He's about to get the wind. Right. I mean, I know that's kind of micro, getting you know fine details, but I am when it comes to the wind, Brad will tell you, I don't chance it. Right. Yeah. You use a dead down wind and all that, yeah. but there's still that, you know, we got camera yeah. gear and all that stuff, we can't spray down. There's gonna be something, something. out there that, that, it may not be human sin, but right. it's gonna be something a big buck's gonna pee on. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Great idea, so we got some new foggers, what we got here? We do, um, we're, we just kind of built on what we did uh, the previous year. The previous year we just introduced Tink 69 natural and synthetic lures. So we're just building on the, uh, the platform that was very successful. Uh, the cool thing about us and is a little unique is this is a BOV style can. So what we have is an aluminum uh, bag really inside of the can and we put the lure in there and then we fill the can with air pressure. So it's 100% lure. Um, there's no, we're a green company, we, right. we try to be everything we do. Um, so no floor carbons, propellants in there. Right. Most of the cans just brand X, we'll say, uh, will empty in about a minute and 30 seconds. Ours will last four minutes and 45 seconds if you lock down the valve. But yeah. you can just do the You can spray it. Yep. Scrapes. Yep. So either way, Stop however. Put some on the air tray. We'll so this, here, you uh, this is a vapor, not a gel. It's not like the spray. I would call it a mist. Mist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Nick, is this a synthetic or is this true deer? Well, let's look at this one. I know y'all do a synthetic. We do. A lot of states are going to mm -hmm. for crazy, you know, liberal you reasons. I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't use real deer. I think Alabama's going. To yep. And if but what we're doing, and we're spending a lot of money on on this, and we're going to the state legislature. So you see this right here? Yeah. RT Quick. I say what, it, I can't read it. <laughs> RT Quick. What this means? RT Quick tested. What this means is we have tested the deer that we use the lure for. Make sure they're, they're CWD free. There's also an ATA um, test here that we do, you know, certification. Right. So our, our deer herds that we use, they're, they're clean. Right. They're, they're good. That's good. Enough. But it'll tell you if there's a synthetic here. I, you know, you'll, you'll read it. But you have that synthetic. option if the guy's mm -hmm. like, you know, I don't even trust that. Right. I want to go synthetic. And, yeah. You know, especially it's there. If, if it's in a state where you can't use, right. you better be using synthetic. You bet. Now, you guys have done testing, I'm sure, on whether or not real dairy urine or the synthetic, if there's a difference. I mean, I know we've tried both, and I've never noticed any difference here come to both of them. They will. They will. You have to be careful, you know, and uh, you got to really do your homework because a lot of it, uh, man, it will get a chemical smell to it a little bit. So you yeah. really got to work hard. And uh, one of the things is there's there's no exact match for, for deer urine in that big right. computer spectrum. You know, they can find strawberry or rose or vanilla or right. chocolate. Not deer deer. No, they don't, they don't have that catalog yet. So it, it's it, it's really a kind of a mad scientist type experiment where right. you're mixing it until you get it right. You so guys got it right. Pretty cool. Like I said, we've had it. Well, let's slide good. this out of the way and let's talk about the big game peanut butter. I mean, we've been, we were using this when it was big game butter. butter right. You know, it's made in uh, Pine Mountain, Georgia, right up the road from us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were involved with these guys, so nice. we can speak volumes and, and give you a hundred pictures off my phone right now of the deer we killed over. So I know it works. You guys kind of come in and maybe tweaked it a little bit. Definitely changed the packaging. Used to come in an orange bucket, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this is more portable. The guy can go in there and dump that yep. out, roll that up, put it in his pack, and no orange bucket laying at the base of the tree. You know. Right, right. But I like lighter. It's, it's a lot easier to open because you know it's sometimes. Oh yeah, noise. quieter. Quieter, but I put some of this out a couple weeks ago. I put two blocks out. I went back three days later, and both were totally gone. Nice, man. They Great. just destroyed them. They so do. we've killed out how many deer coming to. Be so we here. really don't need you to talk about that. We got that one coming. <laughs> well, it, it, well, it has changed a little bit, though. Yeah. Right? I mean, you do have little bit. peanuts in it now. It, we do. Now, um, we increased some of the protein, it's 22% now. Uh, the crude fat is 40%. Um, and there's even some fiber in there, 5%. But the important thing these guys need to know is there's no peanut shells. There's no fillers. Right. I mean, it is the I mean, real you can peanuts. Actually, you can see the peanuts in there. Yeah, I mean, you could eat it. It looks like a fruit cake to me. It does. Oh, 
you pull it out, man, it's like peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah. And deer love grape. I don't know what it is, but they love grape. grape. We also got an apple this flavor, This is the PB&J. and j PB and j oh, man. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. yeah. I just use the regular peanut butter ones. So that's even better. Dude, you step I, it I up. That. So, so <laughs> we may make a sandwich and right. lay it out there and see if they eat the whole thing. There you go. So there what, you. we got a new uh, trophy taker here. What's yeah, yeah. About? Well, we're, we're building on our, what we call our, our lockup feature. Um, last year, we, we brought out the SmackDown Pro lockup, right. uh, which is a limb-driven technology. Right. Um, the Stream Pro is cable-driven, so th what that means is the activation cord, you tie it into your cable right. that goes down right. as you draw the boat, right. right? I mean, some guys are limb-driven fans, some guys are, are cable, and you, you're not going to change them, so why right. do it? I, I prefer limb-driven, and I, I think too. it's a better system, but... I think it clears quicker. It does, and, and it's more consistent. You can change your draw length. You string, can, there's no string stretch that's going to get involved in uh, limb-driven. Nope. And uh, you can change draw lengths. Maybe you change your release. You have to tweak your draw length a little bit. Your limb driven is there. You have right. to retime the cable driven. But for those guys that want cable driven, string, lock up. When you say lock up, does it lock in position? What happens is we have a lever. You press the lever and the whale tail launcher on will flip to the up position. So as you're drawing the it's boat, already it's already in the launch position. And when you come back, it hits a little mechanism that locks it in place, and then it'll drop as you release there. So the release part is still the same, but the release part. So instead of drawing for it to come up, it, yes. You can do so it. if you draw back thinking you're about to get a shot and you don't, and you let it back down, is it going to stay locked? It, it will go back down. It it'll will. It, so it you're, you're good to go for the next draw. Yep. Well, that's cool because then you ain't, the arrow's not banging off the riser. Or anything. Right. Well, that's a totally enclosed uh, it is. arrow. Uh, Rest there, so mm -hmm. you should do that. Those are great for what we do out west, cool. spotting and stalking and stuff. You know, you don't have to run around with your arrow. Right. I mean, you know, you can obviously, and that's a right. habit for a yeah. lot of us. Right. But you know, the arrow is going to be in there. It is. Uh, mm -hmm. Some great products, man. We're so glad to be using them. Glad well, you like them. I, I'm, them I'm definitely looking forward to using this and the new Ram Cat for sure, and we can start testing that immediately. You know, you. you before long, you guys probably will come up with, a, and you may have mentioned this, a uh, like a center track of strawberry, you know, something yeah, that you can put out for hogs. It's, you it's know, you know, another market yeah, yeah. For that. Honey, glazed donuts, bacon exactly. for bear hunts. Right. I mean, it's so when you get that ready, bring it down. We'll throw it out there and try it. I would. Okay. We'll no, do that. The offer is still there. Come down anytime. Well, thank awesome. you, man. I appreciate, appreciate it. Time, thank buddy. you, guys. Man. Thank you very much for everything. Enjoy yeah. the show, man. Have a good Mark, you mentioned after we shut the cameras down, yeah. something you really want to show us being from the deep south, we deal with you know insects and sugars, mm -hmm. mosquitoes in particular. Mm -hmm. So, uh, ticks. Yeah, ticks. ticks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't mind a tick because I can see and get it all. Sugars is my thing. I got you. And then the mosquitoes, if you right. want to try to kill something, you can't be doing this the whole time. Right, right. So, what do we got here? Dead down winds? Yeah, we call it insect defense. defense. It's, a, it's a totally 100% natural product. Um, again, it's going back to that where green comes from thing. So right. the BOV style uh, actuator, you know, no hydrofluorocarbons or any of that. So Virginia cedar wood oil is the key ingredient that that's what does the magic. It, it will kill fleas, uh, it will kill ticks, um, mosquitoes that will repel. I mean, flies, gnats, any of that stuff. Oh, Chiggers, I can tell the smell's a lot more pleasant. Yeah. Than you. you can find a cedar tree just about everywhere you go, right? Yeah. So it, again, it's, it's a it's cover set. Yeah. It's and you it's go over. market that under Dead Dead Wind, obviously. We are. Yeah, you can find that on Dead Dead Wind website. Totally kid safe. Um, I, safe. As I was testing this spring in, in Turkey Woods in Georgia, as you guys can attest to, there's ticks everywhere. I, I had one tick on me all season. Wow. He was crawling across my boot, and he was trying to get out of town, yeah. you know, <laughs> as quick as he could. Uh, but, I, I mean, I even sprayed this on my dog. He kept my fleas off of my dog. It makes it smell bad, right? too. Oh, yeah, right? That's nice. Absolutely. So, it, it's it's totally safe, it's, it, and it works. Well, I'll tell you what. We're excited about that because, honey, like you said, in Georgia, hog honey through the summer, early bow season, yeah. turkey season, yeah. we use a lot of other stinky things. Right. That is the, the godsend. Well, again, thank you so You're much welcome. for bringing this to our attention. We definitely will try that yeah. out this year. Well, hey, I look Thanks forward to hearing from that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, here Brad and I are at the Habit booth, and Brad, how nice is it to walk in and see our own camo hanging here? Man, I was so excited to see that. Plus, we got the nice chair there in it, and you know, we're really excited to be working with Habit about our 
carrying our camouflage yeah. going forward, and we got a lot of things working out with them. You know, we did that program in Sam's yeah, where you could buy really a lot well. of this stuff here. You know, this is more the warm weather gear for you know us in the south. Right. Early deer season, you know, turkey season, it works out great. But when we head west and you know Midwest, it's starting to get colder. We need that warm weather gear. What the good news is, yeah. it's coming this fall through the Habit brand. You'll be able to get broadsword Raider concealment. Make sure you check in uh, continuously with the Raider, uh, the podcast, Challenge Outdoor podcast. See what's going on with Raider because it's going to be out there, guys. You've been asking for it. The sales prove it, and we're going to bring it to you. All right, we got to get way back over there to uh, kind of face. Yeah, like a maze. Back over there, but that's pretty much going to do it for the 2020 show for you guys. Hopefully, hopefully, you enjoyed a lot of the new products. Man, Arcus had it going on, didn't it? Yeah, they did, and so did um, Luminox. Got some good stuff. So, yep. yeah, it's been a good show, man. I'm ready to get home, though. There's, yeah, there's a couple <laughs> of products I can't wait to use, but yeah, it's been a while. We got some bad weather. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the Challenge Outdoors podcast. Check us out in two weeks. Make sure you go and subscribe and like this yeah, and, ring, and the ring the bell. Hey guys, Brad Frost from Raider Concealment. And I'd like to encourage everyone to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the like button and also ring the notification bell so that you'll get all the updates for our upcoming videos.